Hey guys, it's me, Orangey and Blue. Or at least that's what it says in my criminal record. Paying a mortgage can be tough. That's why I didn't pay mine for the past four years. But that doesn't mean it's time to close up shop yet, because I still need to find a way to make money. I could try to sell my Burger King games, but I'm still waiting on the capital gains on those. Anyways, in the meantime, I think I need to work on my video game reviewing skills, because quite frankly, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. So I think now would be a good time to look to see what everyone else does and see what I can learn from them. Video game critics are a staple in online consumption. You can't even turn a corner without seeing a three and a half hour long video about a random ass game you've never even heard of. Now those technically would be called video essays, but today, that's not what we're talking about. No, no, no. This is strictly about video game reviews. Video games can be expensive, which is why many people want to make sure what they're playing is of high quality. And how this was done in the past is you would walk over to your local video game store and you would rent a game and see which one you want to buy. But now, things can be quite different. Now you just go online and look up a video of a white cop glasses telling you what your opinion should be. Game critics have been around since the 80s. The first of these was called Arcade Ally, which is a gaming magazine that reported on all the hottest gaming news, with screenshots that made you want to question why you were spending your mortgage on Video Olympics for the Atari. Ah yes, the first portable gaming system. You just had to bring this whole ass TV to grandma's house just to play Asteroids. Many of these gaming centered magazines started popping up in the 80s. But then when the late 90s came around, we started seeing tons of these gaming websites pop up. IGN, Metacritic, GameSpot, all of these served the same purpose. To get the review out as fast as possible. The problem arises when there's multiple reviewers working on one publication. This makes it harder to know where the point of view is coming from. Everyone has a different taste in games. So when Colin Stevens, someone whose favorite games are Final Fantasy, Metal Gear, Metroid, and The Last of Us makes a review about Kirby Return to Dreamland, it makes you start to question why, out of all the games, he chose to review a Kirby game. One thing you'll notice is that mostly every major game gets either an 8 or 9 out of 10. Now occasionally, there is a game that is so bad and unplayable, like the new Gollum game, where it gets a 4 out of 10. Now where things start to get interesting is when you look at the games that received a 10 out of 10. Now it's surprising how low the number is of games that actually have a 10 out of 10. In fact, it's less than 50 games on this website that has a 10 out of 10 score. Now, with some games, it's obvious why it got a 10 out of 10. Like, okay, Ocarina of Time, GTA 5, Resident Evil 4, Breath of the Wild, Super Mario Galaxy 2, and uh, Checkered Flag for the Atari Lynx. The Atari Lynx, everyone. Give it up. For every Metroid Prime, there's a Tornado Mania game. Yeah, a discontinued iPhone game. Ah, uh, yes. Sonic Pocket Adventure. The classic game that everyone loves that was released exclusively for the Neo Geo Pocket Color. Everyone loves that game. It's a household name. Pfft. Who's even reviewing these games anyway? Who's this Craig Harris guy? How does Magical Tetris Adventure get a 10 out of 10, but Super Mario 64 gets a 9.8? I know it's only 0.2 points, but I just gotta know what universe this Craig Harris guy thinks that this game is better than Donkey Kong Country Returns. I'm sorry Craig Harris, but I think your rating system is completely flawed. Never mind guys, Craig Harris gave Mario Golf a 10 out of 10 masterpiece. Greatest game reviewer to ever exist. Now, why is there such a big disconnect between these game reviewers? Well, most of the people working for these companies are forced to play through these games, even if they might not want to. There's so many games that are getting released nowadays where it's become impossible to fully enjoy all these games, so they have to rush through them to make a quick review. Many companies have deals with these game developers so they can get early review copies of the latest games. So they often just give them a good review and skip past the negative parts of the game. They often just end up giving the game a good review or just skip past the negative parts of the game so they can keep their partnership because in their eyes, you want to make sure you can get out the review as fast as possible to get ahead of the competition. In the past, gaming outlets have been the go-to for video game content. But with the rise of online video, that was all about to change. 
You see, online video back then was still very underdeveloped. Many people would have to go to their own websites just so they could see their own videos. And the only way to watch them was to download them and then watch them in the abysmal quality on your PC. Many of these early creators are generally served the same purpose. To talk about old video games no one cares about, and yell at the camera repeatedly in hopes that loud equals funny. One of, if not the first online video game reviewer, was the Angry Video Game Nerd. James Wolfe started the show in 2004 and played the character as the Angry Video Game Nerd, who was an obnoxious and vulgar reviewer who cared way too much about old NES games. This series definitely speaks early internet, and while the loud character played by James definitely did turn some people off, it inspired a lot of people to create their own videos and prove that you could in fact make money by talking about video games. As time went on, there definitely became much more distinction between these types of creators. Many would develop their own spin and how to tackle certain games. Some of them would have their own gimmick and follow a specific format, series like the Girlfriend Reviews, and would take almost a second person approach and review the game from a backseat gamer's perspective. And as they put it, So this isn't a review of Breath of the Wild. This is a review of what it's like to live with someone whose oldest friend is a video game. There's also some satire reviewers like Video Game Donkey, who sometimes you can't even tell what his opinion of a game is. Pokemon Let's Go Eevee is probably the best video game that I have ever played. As I'm sure you all know, I am a massive Pokemon fan. I already have my tickets for the new movie. It looks incredible. Now, where do I begin with this masterpiece of a video game? Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu is probably the worst video game that I have ever played. Whether or not the review is of a good game or a bad one, or a new one, or an ass old game, they all serve the same purpose. To share their opinion and experiences of these games with others. And then some people just take whatever ad deal they can get to promote the newly released video game. Much like the major video game publications, some creators have contracts and sponsorships in order to keep getting the games early, and this often causes them to overlook the flaws the game might have. Many just review the most garbage thing just to try to sell people on paid promotions, brand deals, and sponsorships just to make a quick buck. Now again, this isn't the majority, but they definitely put a sour taste in people's minds when it comes to video game critics. Okay, now that I know a little bit about game reviewing, let's see if I can act it out and follow along. First, you have to look the part. Make sure you give up a look that says no one's talked to me in the past five years. Make sure you have a giant wall of games that you've never played and a bunch of useless gaming collectibles because people won't take you seriously unless they know you bought Super Mario Galaxy fridge magnets. First things first, you need to find a game to review about. If not, well then, it's gonna be tough to fill out the next 10 minutes. Make sure you have some pointless backstory about your history with this game me, personally, I don't know a damn thing about this game. I only picked it up because it said it was made by Steven Spielberg. It's important to be very knowledgeable about what you're talking about. So do a quick look on uh, Wikipedia, and you can pretty much just copy and paste the first paragraph, and people wouldn't even notice. Okay, now we're getting into the meaty part of the review. The game. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on there. You almost made it look like you were going to completely skip past the most important part of the video. Make sure you point out every little detail in the game's box art, and if you get bored, just simply read from the game manual. When you first boot up the game, make sure you seem surprised and act like you have no idea what you're playing. I have no idea what I'm playing. When you're playing the game, make sure you point out every little thing that's happening on screen, because if you don't, people might not know what you're doing. It fell down? What? Hey, it's been a while since I shared a useless fact. Did you know this game was originally going to use head tracking to track your movement and was going to be played with two Wiimotes and an LED head strap? State of the art. Once you talk a bit more about the gameplay, how it works, how it doesn't work, now take the time to complain about something random, even if it doesn't affect you in any way whatsoever. Is that a polar bear? Now that we've gotten a pretty good amount of stuff to work with here, you and definitely I need a break. So now's a good time to throw in an unfunny joke or a random skit just to pad out the video. Boom blocks? More like boo blocks, am I right? Ha. <sighs> Once you start making your last remarks, make sure you say something that contradicts everything you just said before. You know, boom blocks is a pretty good party game. <laughs> then bam, end it with a corny one-liner no one understands. This is definitely the Simlers list of video games. This is definitely the Simlers list of video games. 
This is the worst thing I've ever watched. It's perfect. <laughs>